Jim Jones, you could do better, brother. I love you too much. I love you too much to not be honest with you. Rick Ross, you could do better, brother. Meek Mill, you could do better, brother. I love you too much not to be honest with you. Are you the face of prison reform? Cause I held, uh, Are you the face of prison reform? Or are you sitting here on your new song with Ross talking about getting somebody murked and shot at the red light? Which one is it, bro? Which one is it, bro? Because I did a shoe giveaway in my city and gave out 1,300 pairs of your shoes because they said reform underneath them. And I love that you partnered with, with a major shoe company and, and you out here pushing prison reform. But now I got to sit here like, man, this man glorifying getting people killed as of a week ago. Like, what are you doing, bro? Lil Snoop really got killed. That broke your heart. You wear him around your neck. What, why are you glorifying the same thing when my best friend got killed? When Carl got killed, New Orleans know who I'm talking about. When Carl got killed and I had to go to his funeral and read the eulogy and be part of the funeral. And I got back in my causeway after the funeral and I turned on my music and I realized I'm listening to music that's glorifying the same stuff that just happened to my best friend. Mm. Mm. It gave me chills and I needed that moment. That was my come to Jesus moment of like, D, you got to do something different, brother, because because you have a taste for this poison. But you, you're attracted to the poison. And rap is great. The rap game, hip-hop industry is great at cooking up some delicious poison. I don't call you out because I got a problem with you, man. Like, I wish we could go get lunch right now, me and any of them. I love you too much to not be honest with you. There you go. That's what it is, bro. Yeah. And so if anybody... Yeah, if anybody feel bad about being called out, it's like let let's talk. Let's uh let let's talk. Let's talk about it and and let and let's just figure out what we can do better. But at the end of the day, guess what's not changing? The word of God ain't changing. Okay. Uh there's death and life in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18 and 21. That's not changing. And trying with this foolish argument that it's just it's just entertainment this ain't real mm -hmm. how many more people got to die in the hood man how many how many people at the end of the day lives got to get ruined and and poisoned and how many rappers got to get killed for us to be like come on man when it's hip-hop it's a whole culture and and it's implied that this is autobiographical and this is non-fiction tales that people are telling how, how much does that have to happen so don't hit me with that people just don't want to confront the reality of this stuff I hear some people saying, why would you publicly challenge certain artists that are glorifying murder and drug dealing and negativity in their music? The better question is, why would you not? If they have the audacity to publicly push these messages out there and reach the masses with them, then we should have the audacity to publicly oppose these messages. It don't go like, oh, you could put all that harmful stuff out there and reach whoever you want loudly and proudly. But... We got to hit you up one-on-one -on, -one on the cool. Like, if we got an issue with it, we got to say something behind the scenes and quietly because we don't want to offend you. If we're trying to do God's work, it don't work like that. See, for the first time, a line is being drawn, and that line is making people uncomfortable because you haven't decided what side you on. Are you on the side that's okay with them messages and okay with the impact of those negative messages? Or are you on the side that's like, nah, we ain't rocking with that? You hear me? And a lot of people never had to decide which side of the line they was on. And it's making people uncomfortable right now. But that's not finna make me quiet. That's not finna make us quiet. Because when you're doing God's work, it ain't something to be quiet about. It's something to be proud of. Meek Mill, you could do better. Jim Jones, you could do better. Rick Raw, you could do better. I gotta see you do better. Wait, wait. Little man, whoever you is, until you feed the kids where you from for 20 years straight. Don't question Rose. Wait, wait until you buy 10,000 bikes, 10,000 trikes. Give all the young girls who pregnant pampers for Christmas for 20 years straight. Don't question boss. You heard me, little man? Get that basket off your head so you could think clear, little man. You going viral for speaking on niggas' names, not because of your talent, not because of your gift. Go viral, player, off of your, your, your wisdom that you're sharing. You speaking on that. Yeah, Meek me, me, Mill. You just, boy, you know how many niggas died this summer? They released self-destruction. It's niggas dying right now. It's going to be niggas don't make it to see in the morning. Get that basket off your head, boy, and come together with real niggas around the world. So when your grandma need a kidney, nigga. Since you want to go viral, I'm going to show you how to go viral, little man. But go viral feeding them kids in your hood. Go viral giving them bikes away. Go viral Christmas time. Now, don't be damn. Jim Jones, Jim Jones just gave away goddamn six figures worth of clothes in his hood. 
and you a nigga who talking, looking vegan, knowing you eat more goddamn piggly wiggly bacon than any other nigga out here. Shut up. Yeah, Mr. Rasta, man. Mr. Vegan, man. Make sure you go viral. Thanksgiving when you stuff the stuffing pond, the turkey bomber clot, asshole. And make sure you dangle from the net. Start with the old lady, then bless the old lady all the way down to the youth, them. You understand, Rasta, man? And look, man, I know real Rastas, which you are far from, you hear me? Rick Ross. First of all, I love you, brother, and I want you to know that because you sounded a little upset in your video reply to me, but I love you too much to not be honest with you, and right now, you're deflecting. I was talking about your lyrical content, and you talking about turkeys. I'm talking about you as a hip-hop OG still glorifying murder and drug dealing in your music, and you talking about turkeys? Bro, more people are streaming your music than eating your turkeys. You can believe that, brother. Oh, then you can make fun of my accent and my hair, brother. That's lightweight, you hear me? What am I doing to help my community? Well, my whole adult life, I've been a middle school teacher. Now I'm a full-time hip-hop artist. Just dropped my 10th album. It's called Uno. You should check it out, actually. I've helped to give out hundreds of thousands of dollars in college scholarships for students around this country. Done financial literacy tours year after year, brother. Shoe drives, toy drives, voter registration rallies, prison ministry. I'm currently a professor at Tufts University teaching the intersection of hip-hop and social change. And I'm a fellow at Harvard University. Ultimately, I'm just trying my best to do God's work in this industry, bro. Then you say, why don't I go viral with my own content? Brother, you a little late to the party. I've been successful for a while, man, and not having to glorify the things that's harmful to our community. Could you do that? I'm curious. Bro, I work with some of the same artists as you. The Game, Lupe, Big Crit, Juvenile, Manny Fresh, Currency, Kevin Gates, uh, Sway, Charlemagne. These people know me, man. So as black men, let's do our best to do God's work and not glorify what's holding us down, man.